live or oh, I, too late <laughs> we're live that's it <laughs> just text me okay tonight welcome back to another mr g's ev community hangout i'm so glad i get to hang out with my electric vehicle friends we get to learn from each other that's the idea i don't know everything and i definitely want the help of everybody so tonight we have a special guest we got brandon watt how you doing brandon I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thanks for asking, Ron. All right. Now, th this is not a joke. This is not a drill. You don't have to rewind the recording. I did say Brandon Watt, W-A-T-T. -T. Is that really your last name and you work in electric vehicles? Yes. Yes, it absolutely is, Ron. I think it was destiny that made it happen. You know, I couldn't escape it. Oh, my God. That's incredible. That would be like having a last name horsepower. And you work on gas cars. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm happy you're here. Man, you know, it's funny. Not a lot of people know. I mean, jokes aside, people don't speak in terms of wattage. They Everyone speaks in horsepower. And I always explain to people, horsepower is like a marketing term. You're just like, you, you, imagine trying to sell an engine or a motor to a farmer. And, and you're like, look. Yeah, you want to buy this thing? It's better than your horses. And they're like, well, let me tell you something. I use 10 horses to pull this sled. How many horses is that thing? And the guy's like, actually, it's rated at 25 horsepower. And they're like, oh, really? Yeah, and it costs less than all your 10 horses combined. And the guy's like, huh. And then, huh. And then, boom, cars. You know, I mean, that's how it went down. And believe it or not, one one horsepower is supposed to be equal to one horse. Nobody knows which horse. Clydesdale, running horse. I don't know different horses. One horse is equal to uh, uh, 550 pounds pulled one foot for one over one second by a horse. What is that? What is this? This is ridiculous. A watt makes sense. Everybody, it's all the same thing. And you've heard this story, right, Brandon? I, I have not actually. I did not realize this is how it came to fruition. <laughs> God, yeah, horsepower is a marketing term. Anyway, uh, all right. So anyway, okay. We also have a round table of people joining us. Luckily, uh, awesome. We got uh, Sarah Lyons in the house. How you doing? Hi, good. Thanks. All right, Sarah's working on a Suzuki Samurai, and she's got this cool project going on. She's going to make that thing electric. She's going to be uh, doing some rock crawling, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> That's what they usually do. They throw a diesel in that thing and then tires bigger than the whole car, you know. Um, and uh, we got oh, we got Jonathan Knight. How you doing? Good, good. Good to be here. What, what's your Instagram again? I forgot. My Instagram is, uh, you can find it under, I think, knight.jonathan. Oh, okay. Didn't you have a... a, a you're working on a project and you have this yeah. okay. i've got a honda civic 1975 wagon and uh nice. slowly but surely converting it and also right. taking care of a lot of rust oh the civic wagon oh that's yeah. cool all right and uh we got talik the co-host helping me out how you doing talik yo yo good evening everybody how's it going dude talik's getting his hands dirty he's working on uh uh, uh uh electric motors he's like moonlighting dude this guy does everything yeah i'm, I'm getting a little hands-on uh with the experience of uh, helping johnny <laughs> replacing re his uh small drive unit yet again in his hilux <laughs> if you're not following j5 industries wait what is the instagram uh so it's j5 johnny 5 with no h j-o-n-n-y j5 johnny 5 and then his company is j5 dynamics I'm going to pull it up. You guys got to follow this. Brandon, you, you know about Johnny Five? I have not heard of this yet. I'm oh, yeah. Get in follow, there. Follow this. Dude, he's <laughs> rebuilding uh, Tesla units. And yeah. uh, the cool thing is he, uh, he pops them into this vehicle right here. Yeah, so he uh, he rebuilds the large drive units um, for a lot of people because a lot of the older Model S and motors are going. But he put a small drive unit in his Hilux, um, which is kind of funny. I feel like we almost talk about this every week, but it's it's a pretty amazing thing he's doing. So, 
Yeah. We'll get Johnny back on here. That would be cool. Plus, he's off grid. He's got all kinds of cool stuff going on. Um, but uh, and, and we got John Lane in the house. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining in. Uh, can we give a preview of what you're working on? Uh, you've got this racing car, right? Oh, it's actually not mine. Um, and then uh, I want to put in a plug for EV Riders Car Club here in San Diego as, as oh, well. Yeah. I put a link in the chat. Plug it. That. Plug it. Yeah. So um, I've been involved with 24 Hours of Lemons since uh, 2011. My brother and I have been racing a Fiero in it. And it's uh, it's billed as $500 car racing. I like now, it. It, it um, uh, gets more expensive than five hundred dollars that's like the that's what you're supposed to spend off of craigslist when you first buy your car before you put a roll cage and get it race ready so that's where the five hundred dollars comes from nice. and then uh actually about four years ago uh the founder of it of the racing series jay lamb had a has a he's a um um car journalist and uh, editor and he uh -huh. was dri he was driving a tesla and although he runs a gas series he was interested in electric cars so he actually put up uh, a prize for the first electric car that wins a lemons race overall so just like the first ev that wins in lemons overall um gets five thousand dollars in nickels nice um they do all their prize money in nickels or other random ways to pay it um and nobody's nobody's really uh gone after the prize in the last oh really years. um when it's, is it's the uh, what's that uh when is the race series uh so it's there are races that are run all over the country like every month there's a race somewhere in the country uh, okay uh, so, so we race up at sonoma raceway and thunder hill and button willow those kind of places uh -huh. but it's but it's endurance racing so um endurance racing and evs and recharging you know is the well, engineering the problem yeah. you have to solve yeah so you have to figure out how to do battery swap swapping well and Anyway, so That's basically, well, I got, I, yeah, I got started. I got, yeah, I got started with lemons, and then at the same time, I got started with EV riders and EVs, and I'm trying to put the two together at some point. Nice. Yeah, let's get let's get into it, and we'll have you back, and that'll be the focus. Uh, just a note on the EV riders: I actually know the founder, which is uh, uh, Abram Coveto. It used to be the Kick Gas Club. Mm -hmm. And that was back in the day. And uh, that yellow car right there you see with the white hood, I helped convert that back in 2008. And uh, so I know you guys well. And we got a lot of good people there, uh, including Kevin Lieberman. And uh, we also have um, uh, Richard. And, uh, yeah, you guys are awesome. So uh, I'm a big fan. I know you guys. Okay. All right, so let's get over to uh, let's get over to the to the to the main event here, which is the Switch Lab, and uh, I'm excited to talk about this. So, Brandon, uh, let's get into uh, a little bit of background about you. Uh, what is uh, like? Wh what was the first electric vehicle you worked on? And I know you said it was recent, but that's okay. Uh oh, worked on actually. I guess I do maintenance and upkeep for my Prius, but I guess that it's a plug-in hybrid, so I I am a participant in the EV wave. But I actually the most EV experience I have is working on the switch. Um, I run the EV workshops, so I've built the switch lab probably two or three times and taken it apart six or seven times. I've built both models at this point, um, and I'm also assisting with the EV trainer, our new product coming out. Nice, nice. And uh, uh, just just as a bonus question, I usually ask this on my other podcast, but did you have shop class growing up? Yes, I did. It was mostly, uh, I'm from Indiana originally, so Purdue University area. I went to Purdue University for two years. 
Um, and so, yes, I do have shop class experience, but it was mostly woodworking and uh, metalwork. It wasn't really anything to do with actual automobiles. Okay. Interesting. All right. Well, that's cool. You got some craftsmanship going. Uh, now, I've, I've worked on the Switch Lab before, and uh, uh, what a great concept. Um, you know, you have a situation where you can, um, you can bring this experience to the high schools, to the colleges, to the trade schools. You know, the transition from gas to electric is kind of a big uh, curve. Um, you know, uh, you know, you're, you know, you're talking to a rare individual. I started converting cars in my high school shop class as the teacher back in 2008, 2009. That's not normal. Most people are reluctant. They're just getting into it. And so you guys provide a kit, which is pretty cool. Can you tell us like how Switch Lab got started? Um, so it actually started with Peter Oliver, which you had the photo of him, uh, I think at SEMA. Um, so he started this back in like 2010. Um, he originally, he was a professor at a the local junior college. He was doing ICE to EV conversion classes. He was teaching that class. He saw that there was a gap in a consumer, a consumer viable 150, 100 mile range EV. And so he actually started prototyping a consumer viable EV. And by the time they were like halfway through prototyping, the Nissan Leaf came out. And so Peter Oliver uh, decided to pivot. Peter Oliver's on the right there. Um, and he decided to pivot and go to education. Um, and he had interest from local high schools who loved the open chassis design, uh, made it really easy to teach and really easy to use as a tool for education. So that's really how it started. It was going to be a consumer a uh, product that they pivoted on because the Nissan Leaf was being mass produced at the time. Oh, okay. That for you know, not for nothing, but that kind of explains a little bit. The not for nothing, but the chassis, it's built like you're gonna drive off the side of a building. <laughs> yes, it was overbuilt with safety. It's a uh, all raw steel tubing. And yeah, so it is it is over designed for education, but that's good because students like to beat the crap out of things. And so that means our vehicle can stand the test of time in high school shop classes. Oh, no, 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 not just high school. Th this thing, you could drive this through a building. <laughs> like it'll go through a brick wall. <laughs> What's the diameter of the tube on that? <laughs> Uh, the, I, I'm not sure the exact size of the diameter, but it is raw steel. It is a car. If a car, a modern car hits you, they will take more damage than the switch will. And oh that's God. a good thing because it's good for safety and it's a good selling point for us is yeah. that the brakes are overbuilt. The brakes are for like a 2,500 pound vehicle, uh, the, the raw steel, and then even the suspension's overbuilt. So it's a completely overbuilt vehicle. Oh yeah. It's wild. And the photos you're looking at here, this was from, uh, this was from SEMA. And um, this was actually right before the pandemic. And it was really cool because uh, I, I finally got a chance to go to SEMA, which was like a dream come true. If you have not been to SEMA, this is the Super Bowl largest aftermarket automotive party of the entire country. There's no need, bigger car show. I need to get out there soon, man. Dude. Woo. Hopefully, Definitely need to. yeah. Hey, does anybody know the dates for next year for SEMA? It's usually the end of October. I'm not sure the exact dates. End of October, it's beginning the first November. Week of November. I could go. That would be awesome. Uh, let me welcome in Justin. I haven't met Justin yet, but saying hi. Welcome to the party. Hey, Mr. G. We met. We met a few weeks ago. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. Sorry. Homebrew. Homebrew auto. That's right. The homebrew. Oh, you're the one with the drawing. Yes. Yes. My spaghetti turned turned nice. <laughs> you know, so when people do drawings, this is actually on the topic of education, Brandon. Um, when people do drawings for electric vehicles, their their wiring diagram is really important. Like that's kind of got to be like the first thing you do before you go installing everything. And what people tend to do is they put a lot of curves in the drawing. And so what I just say to people is, hey, vertical and horizontal. That's it. You're not allowed to do anything else. It's a grid. Uh, so, you know, and, and Justin quickly fixed it 
and uh, 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 you know his drawings look a lot better now. And that's all you got to do. Um, so speaking of uh, education, this is kind of like Brandon's area. You want to tell us about your workshops because you know we I, I have experience building one of the one of your kits with a with a teacher, but um, he needed a lot of help because he hadn't done it before. And so they called me in as a consultant only because I was local. But then I think he did go to one of your classes. Uh, I tried to get him on tonight, but we couldn't couldn't make it in. Um, but can you tell us about your uh, your classes? What what are they like? What's it like? What what do you guys what do you guys do in the classes? All right, so our EV workshop it's four and a half days intensive training. So with every purchase of a Switch Lab EV, that school you're also purchasing the workshop. We do not want any teachers to go in blind or uneducated, especially with high voltage safety organization of how to teach it in a classroom. Um, so that's what we offer, and also we offer it to the public to learn about basics of high voltage safety, BMS, motor controllers understanding all the fine details that go into every single BM or every single electric vehicle. And so most of the times it's teachers, but we do have a lot of enthusiasts who love to take it because they want to get into EV conversions and our class is a great way to get them the basics. And then they can move on and start fabricating the necessary mounts for their EV conversions. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, so like, is it hands on? Do you guys? Oh do yeah, you build you build the whole vehicle in four and a half days. So every oh, single workshop, you are building our Switch Lab EV. You are driving it. You are troubleshooting it. You are programming it. You do the whole nine yards. Wow, no kidding. Do you guys? Uh, do you guys host the people, or they got to find their own place to live? Uh, they the school they have to pay for their own travel expenses and housing and stuff. But a lot of people love to come to Sebastopol, California, because it's wine country. Ah. So teachers kind of make a mini vacation out of it. It's a great location for that. Oh, that's awesome. Can you imagine? Oh, I'm going to learn electric vehicles. It's really hard. I'm, oh, I got to go to wine country, you know. <laughs> Not like going to Detroit, you know, like, ah, I'm gonna work on some engines in Detroit, you know. Uh, I, the irony of you saying that is we actually host our EV workshops in Canton, Michigan, which is right outside of Detroit as well. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Um, pretty cool. So four days. So you guys assemble it. Now, how many people in the class? Uh, we do a max of 15 because that's kind of the max students we want teachers to have in their classes. Um, we don't want too many cooks in the kitchen. Only so many hands can be on the vehicle at once. And so that's really... Yeah. The 10 to 15 people are the best. We usually get around that many attendees per workshop. Now, I, I, you know, I build uh, electric vehicles with students. And last summer, I did a project. Actually, Sarah was there. It was pretty cool. And Talik was there. Uh, and we, we did convert a, a Volkswagen bus. Uh, and we did it in five weeks. Um, yeah, but it was very difficult because it's all new people. And um, also not all the parts fit because it's a kit going into an old vehicle. Um, now we barely pulled that off. Yeah. Uh, you know, we got it, we got it done in uh, uh, five weeks. How do you, uh, how do you do the four, the four days with new people? Do you well, break it into teams? What's your strategy? Ron, I was going to say before we get into a question about this is I think what, you know, would have let us go faster. And it's your motto you constantly talk about is make sure you're converting a car that's a car. So we were dealing with a lot of non EV problems, right? That's a true. That's a true. I make a joke that don't, you know, some people are like, oh, I have this uh, beautiful vehicle sitting in my lawn. It's rusting away. <laughs> Should I uh, convert? I go, no, no. no. You want to convert a car, not a carcass. It's got to have brakes, steering. It's got, you know, like, you, you, you can't convert. It's not convertible. It's, it doesn't even work, you know. Anyway, I always get a laugh out of that. I, I always say that because, I, you know, I had, I had a whole bunch of rust buckets uh, sitting around for a while. And I totally get it because there's, I don't know why, there's something wrong with all these gearheads, including me. Everyone wants to, um, you know, convert some old, rusted out floorboards missing you got to flintstone it you know and i'm just like 
just do something reasonable, you know? And I always advise that. Um, so, so Brandon, what's your strategy? Uh, um, our strategy is that we sell a full kit that's organized. And so everything's where it needs to be. And it always goes together the way it's supposed to. That's the whole point is it's rebuildable and reusable. And so the teachers come in, everything's organized on the racks. I'm actually doing this video call in our workshop area. Um, it hosts our show vehicle and uh, R&D products uh, in the meantime between workshops. But yeah, everything's organized. We have the PowerPoints down to a science. We have great instructors. And so everything runs smoothly. Sometimes they get done a half day early. And so that means Friday, they just get to do burnouts. They get to push that thing to the limit and they have a ton of fun. Wow, wow. That's pretty cool. Um, now, uh, let's see, I think we have a, okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah, exactly. John says, if you convert a piece of crap in the end, you'll have an electric piece of crap. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. No, but, uh, but Brandon, you're, 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 you're glossing over a piece or a couple of pieces of information here. We really got to dig in here. So even though it's organized, how do you assemble your team? Is it two people per project? Like for, I'll give you an example. Yeah. Okay. So I got, I got your answer oh, for you. So battery okay, box, okay. battery box, three teachers, control box, three teachers, dashboard, three teachers, uh, low voltage panel, three teachers. Boom. You break them up. We usually like to rotate them so they get experience and hands on with every single compartment of the vehicle that makes it come together. And that's also how we want them to teach their classes where you break the students up and they get to work on each section of the vehicle and they all get to learn the same uh, techniques. Okay. So yeah, and then how many instructors? Is it you and the 15? Uh, you'll be one instructor. Uh, we've got four or five of uh, certified switch instructors who do a wonderful job and they've done this for years. Um, it's usually one instructor and then I usually assist if I'm not traveling for uh, conferences or conventions. Okay, okay, pretty cool. Um, now I now let me just go around the room uh, for anybody that has questions. Um, Sarah, did you now Sarah took some training and uh, she took training with uh, Electric Vehicle Learning Center. She took training, I think, with Legacy as well. Um, was there any training where you got to uh, assemble a vehicle? Um, actually, the only training I took was with EVLC. Oh, and no, there was no, there was no assembly. It was just like listening and, um, a little bit of, a little bit of hands-on, but it, it was, it was very much like the concepts, not, not like how to do it. So, yeah, yeah. It, it, was sounds, just, like it what? sounds like you need to stick around for the summer build this summer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but she's that. got her own build now. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of learning by doing <laughs> at this point. Uh, yeah. which is kind of one of my favorite ways anyway. So, totally. but, um, I mean, it would, it would be, I think I would get a lot more out of training now that I've had to order parts. And now that I like have had to get into it, I would, you know, I would get a lot more out of training. So nice. Well, let's just talk about training for everyone in the room. Uh, Justin, did you do any training? Yeah, I did uh, the same. I think it was EV 101 at, at the EVLC. Um, uh, not not so much hands on though. Although we got to see that, um, you know that that cart. Um, that oh, was yeah. definitely cart useful uh, to play around with. Everything was nice and labeled, so we could we could understand. But yeah, um, definitely now learning by doing as well. Nice. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. This is an older, uh, this was from last year. <laughs> are you uh, doing another summer conversion? We are. So we're, we're shaping up and we're coming to kind of, we're going to kind of come up with it like an idea. Um, right. uh, you know, I'm not sure we're going to do another, uh, do another uh, vehicle uh, like the full size. We might do uh, racing go karts, and uh, uh, that would be kind of cool because then it'd be competitive, and then we can go out there and like, 
you know, hit the track a little and the, there's something fun about competitiveness and destructive testing and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so we'll see. We don't, we're, we're shaping it up right now. Um, now let's see, we got NGM. Is that, uh, introduce That's yourself Hunter. there. Oh, Hunter. <laughs> oh my hey guys. God. Good to see you, Hunter. Good to see you. Been a minute. Good to see you again, Brandon. Too. Hunter, the man, the myth, the legend. We got him in the house. How you doing? Yeah, I like the sound of go karts, dude. Right at racing, yeah. it's no. just in the, it's in the DNA. I think that would be awesome. Have four or five people per team and a couple of carts. Then you get to see who does it the fast, see who does it the the fastest, see who does it the best, and see who's the best driver. Exactly. Yeah, that would be yeah. awesome. Well, I I'll take input. It, once we set up that plan, I'll take input like uh, ideas and uh, how to make it really good. Um, it seems like uh, everybody wants to, you know, get in on that. Now, just so, just in case people know, uh, Hunter runs um, NetGain Motors, and uh, NetGain is your, uh, you know, your Hyper Nine, dude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know that thing's like powerful and small. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. And it's crazy because I've been, um, you know, I've been messing around with this stuff for a while and, uh, you know, it's just so fun that now I can actually talk with the people behind it. Uh, just incredible. You know, it's a, it's a small little community, you know, even though it's growing very quickly. Um, now, uh, Hunter, how long you've been at this? This is like, uh, been a while, right? Yeah. Most of my life. Um, we started that game in 1998. I think I was, I would be seven years old at the time then. So it's, it's been a family business ever since then. And, um, we're still at it. I'm, I'm working on a go-kart myself right now. It was, it was net gains. Uh, I don't know, uh, learning platform back in 1998 while we were building an electric dragster at the same time. And uh, it's been in our possession ever since, and it's getting an update right now. New motor, new controller, new batteries, and it should be done in about a month. Nice, nice. And I was lucky enough, I got, I got a ride in a crazy off-road vehicle this summer with you. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, you really had some fun in that. Dude, he's, he's, he put a neck gain motor in like some crazy, illegal off-road looking crazy thing. Like... If you're going to be in the movie Mad Max, this is it. Except you, electric the torque is instant. You know, you That's, could, you could like spin it around if you wanted to, you know, you sure did. It's, I it, think, yeah, it's pretty awesome. I mean, you take a hyper nine that most people put in a three or 4,000 pound vehicle and you put it in something 2000 pounds with a five speed transmission. And it, it's crazy. It's crazy. Or if fast. you're like switch and you put it in a 1200 pound vehicle and let kids drive it. Even <laughs> I love dude what goes on yeah you know it's just amazing what's possible with these electric motors and uh just so exciting that everybody's like jumping in the game you know i really like that mm -hmm. awesome uh let's see let's get around the room for for uh for training uh did i ask jonathan yet no yeah i was um i'm also a evlc uh alumni and um i'm not, i'm probably like a cautionary tale of of worst case scenarios i came to the class with like uh probably about 25 percent of my project done at that point starting from a car that would had no hope of ever driving again and um at this point you know whatever six eight months later i'm probably like 30 percent into my project <laughs> because of all that uh all the mistakes i've made along the run along the way but but you know the process is is what it's all about for me it's just like kind of a zen process of learning every single detail of building a car from the ground up dude i think i got i think i found it there it is yeah uh, that's yeah oh, you got the oh, video cool. <laughs> yeah for those that are watching this on youtube afterwards when i post it there you go <laughs> just like you're just gone That's and insane. it's got the dust trail it looks like a gas vehicle from a distance you know people are like oh i like the sound of the gas engine I'm like yeah but you know 
You want to make noise or you want to go fast? <laughs> yeah. All you could hear that day was the sound of the brakes squeaking the whole time because they never get used. We just used the regen of the motor. So the brakes were all locked up. And oh my God. That's all we heard in that video. Yeah. That's, that's always my thing about like when people are like, oh, I, I wish my exhaust now. It's like, yeah, you know, a, a good note is great, but that's always a side effect byproduct of what makes the power. I always like to go fast without making sound so you don't attract attention or unwanted attention. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, well, so saying you're, you're 30% of the way through your build. How long have you been working on it? I've been working on it a couple of years. Um, okay. but like I said, I started from a car that basically I got for like 200 bucks a carcass and, um, it's a carcass. So I, I started with just basically doing restoration work on it for the first about a year and a half. And uh, still not done with that, but I've started to fit uh, the EV components in there. I'm just going to, I'll throw my my YouTube channel up into the chat if anyone wants to take yep. a look at it. Yeah, I'll go right to it. Um, you know, uh, so, so it's been an awesome process. Uh, I really enjoy working on it. I enjoy all the details, but it's long. Definitely long. Yeah, it's... I was just going to say the conversion process for most of our customers, conversion alone typical when you're working in on it part-time at the end of the day is six months to two years is is the average good morning yeah totally yeah this I can is great I you're can documenting it sorry go ahead oh i can just relate to it taking a lot longer than well you ever think it would yeah. we're using the hyper nine motor as well so oh. it's nice to meet you Nice to meet you too. In a, in a two thousand pound Suzuki Samurai. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Merit at EV West is doing a Samurai right now with the Hyper Nine too. Oh, oh crazy! I gotta go check that out. Man, I need to get over to EV West. <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah, that EVLC program. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm there pretty regularly. I just I haven't been there in a few weeks. I got gotcha. you. That's great. You know, it's so cool. That's the whole point of this is to connect the dots with everyone. And uh, Jonathan, uh, what a cool project you're working on. And, uh, you know, thank you for taking the EVLC class. And just so everybody knows, that's a nonprofit. And uh, the money goes towards uh, more programs and uh, teaching students. Actually, they're doing a great program now for adults and students, which is um, making your own battery pack, uh, you know, small battery pack, but it'll be good enough for a little e bike. And it's um, it's done by Lou. He's a battery specialist. And uh, so if people are interested, that's great. And so this is a great, John, I didn't know about this YouTube channel. I'm really happy to see this. Yeah, yeah. Glad to share it. I've got I've got a few followers, maybe a hundred. So it's not not anything huge, but that's okay. It's not really it's quality over quantity, you know, like I mean, even this group podcast here, this is really just about getting everybody together for, you know, once a week, get some updates, get some highlights and uh, get to meet the man himself, Brandon Watt, you know, stuff like that, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, everybody give give Jonathan a follow. That's awesome, man. Um, now, uh, Jonathan, so you took our, you got started, you took yeah. the EVLC class. Yeah. But you had never done this before. No, no, I never done any of this before. Uh, basically, it was a whim to start with, and then I started tearing this car down, and uh, got into it. Got real passionate about it. Uh, put together the components with a little bit of advice from various uh, sources. I was talking to the guys at EV West, talking to the guys at Thunderstruck. Um, I purchased the the battery modules, the motor, the transmission and um and started to sort of figure it all out from what i could and then i took the course and the course was awesome um i learned so much on that weekend but uh, one of the main things i learned was i probably just started in completely the wrong place <laughs> i was you know I, was, I like you said should have gone with a car that was like already driving so i didn't have to do all this you know tearing everything down and building it up from scratch but and i would have been done a lot quicker but at the same time like i like all that work 
I like the electronic stuff. I like doing the motor stuff, but I also don't mind doing some scraping and some painting and some sanding, and a lot of welding. I've gotten real into welding. I took a welding class, oh. I learned MIG welding, TIG welding. Uh, so that's that's awesome. I mean, that's like the most fun thing to spend a day doing that. So that's awesome. No regret. No regrets, really. But you know, if I was to start again, I'd probably go a little bit of a different route. But Dude, I'm, uh, congratulations on taking this on. You know, I to be, you know, even though I kind of, I don't know what I said to you at the time. But did, was I in the class? Was I? Yeah. Okay. I probably tried to deter you. Did I ever say, did I ever try and slow you down? Oh, no, I, I wasn't about to be slowed down anyways. But um, I mean, I heard <laughs> that from, from you and uh, basically everyone there was saying the same advice and I, I heard it and I was like, well, I'm a little bit too far into it at this point to, to go backwards, but, um, but it, you know, it's cool. It's okay. All a learning process. Now, you, now, um, but I will say congratulations on having the guts to do it. And so even though I try and slow people down and I know that Brandon is very encouraging, but he's also probably practical in the way he breaks down the class. I really like your class, by the way. And I want to talk to you more about uh, the cart that you guys have next. Um, but so, but I want to congratulate you, Jonathan, on going for it. And that's the thing is that not a lot of people even get started, you know, and you got to be a little crazy. So uh, take that in a good way. You got to be a little crazy to get started on a project like this. Yeah, it's not the first time I've been like in over my head on a project. So kind of the way I, I think I do things. Oh, I see you have a mock-up here. That's great. Yeah, that's my inverter. So, you know, I've got the real thing, but obviously that thing, the real thing weighs like 70 pounds. So you know, I've got a, a plywood version. We were talking about this, I think, last week or the week before. Yeah. Richard, yeah, Talik, right? Yeah, well, yeah mock-ups for fitting things. Yeah, yeah. Could we, can someone please 3D print or foam cast mock-up motors hey hunter you got a you got a foam 3d printed uh a motor for us or what man yeah yeah we have a 3d printed hyper 9 out what? of yeah yeah the, and the models are online anybody with the 3d printer can do it too oh you, you need crazy. a big enough printer huh yeah um well it's got to be about nine inch by nine inch or ten inch by ten inch and then you can print the height in pieces but it's only 14 inches long oh good idea oh. so you can make in pieces mm -hmm. and then what just bolt it together probably or glue it yeah little uh machine bolts that's excellent all right can you throw that do you have a link a direct link i'll put it right on here yeah yeah i'll do that right okay. now okay see when you talk directly to the man himself this is what <laughs> happens Shit gets shit happens quicker, you know. It's not like I work at a high school, it's my day job, man. It takes forever. You can't even get pencils, you know. <laughs> they do get you the pencils, but it takes about a month, you know. <laughs> um, all right, this is cool. So, all right, what do you what do you think, Jonathan? The best part of the uh EVLC class was ah, uh, you know, um Checking out the cart was really informative and getting to like just trace all the circuitry and knowing where, what connects to what and how. And, and you know, I, there's a lot of stuff in the binder that you guys put together, but I took a lot of pictures myself. And I, I go back to, and refer to that like constantly. So oh, nice. um, using that binder is amazing. Um, I loved checking out the whole uh, the, the Tesla battery pack and just getting the tour of that. A little more hands-on than I expected, um, <laughs> but uh, that was cool. Nice, nice. So you know, um, that's kind of what I it was leading. Forgive me. Uh, that I I think I thought you'd say the cart, and so there's basically like it's just it's basically like a, uh, a a table or a desk with the entire Hyper Nine system on there, and so I was curious. I wanted to go and talk with Brandon right now. Uh, Brandon, do you guys have like a desk or a cart or a bench top 
that you'd like to talk about? Okay, right behind. It's right you. there, literally right behind us. It's a fully functional EV on a on a cart as well. So um, it's got a Hyper Nine down low. Maybe I can get the camera to. Yeah, yeah I was get gonna say, can we get a literally. Camera? Yeah. Does wow. It so it's got the Hyper Nine right there. I can get my hand to move right. It's got a. Whoa. I think it's got a. Uh, no, it's not thirty-two. Twenty-four cell pack. Uh, shout out to NetGain Motors for uh, hooking us up with uh, their Hyper Nine. But yeah, it's a fully functional EV with lights, uh, wiring looms. The whole point of it is uh, to get students a chance to work on EVs if they don't have space in their school. And cost. It's half the price of the full actual Switch Lab EV. And it's a really great, great way to get hands-on uh, engagement from students. That is awesome. Do you have that on your website or on a on No, the it's not on our website. It actually came out in January. So um, I think in the sales deck I sent you, there's a whole photo describing it Ooh, and everything okay. about it. I think I might have found something. What's this? Yep, that's that was our spin test. That was R and D. That was our first time getting the motor to run. Uh, we actually didn't go with AEM in the end, so that is a little bit that's, that's very early prototyping. Okay. Uh, AEM gave us a lot of trouble, um, and so we kind of just decided to go a different route with it. Um, just do the Orion BMS. We like the Orion platform. It's a really easy platform to get teachers to understand and be able to teach their students about it. Nice. Uh, keep scrolling. It's down. Okay, I'm gonna find it. Boom, oh, there, there you go. Ta-da. Now, yeah, it's, got a, it's got a full dash display. It can, it's got a CAN system, so you can oh. check the state of charge. You can literally swipe through the screens and see exactly every single cell voltage, make sure nothing's going wrong or wonky. There's a fault light. There's a pack hot light. There's a go light, the green light. Uh, it's got a, a main disconnect, uh, emergency disconnect button, the big red button, we call it. You hit it, uh -huh. everything turns off. It's a great safety uh, tool to teach with. Nice. Yeah, I really like this. Um, now, let's say you get this cart, and then you want to do the car with you know, your setup. We, we highly encourage that. We highly encourage that. This is a test bench and also a teaching bench. Um, depending on if a school wants to convert a donated car, this thing can be put into any vehicle under, I think, 2,000 pounds. Uh, you might have to buy more batteries, but it depends on if you're trying to build a car to teach your students or actually make something consumer viable. Um, right. That is awesome. Yeah, it's clear glass. Uh, the, the front flips down. It's a folding table. So like this whole thing will fold flat. It's got two pins, yeah. and it's got a pneumatic uh, spring that keeps it up. Oh. Wait, so it, like, how does it go? It, like, folds out? Give me a second. Oh, he's doing it. He's going to show you. All right. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to pin. Where'd it go? Pins. That was Let's too go. quick. Oh, I didn't even know what happened. <laughs> so just flip. It can stay on while flipping too. So it just folds up into a triangle. Oh, wow. It's got heavy caster pins. So it's a table as well. So a class doesn't actually lose any space and they can use it as a tabletop. Brandon, then, did you do and then a also magic show once before? And then, oh, and then this oh. also this also flips up, and now you have a place for your laptop to do all your programming and configuring. And Dude, you can this see all the awesome. problems underneath. Yeah. Wow, I'm can impressed. I, this is great. Can I show? Can I show you my cart in um, comparison? Yeah, yes. I would love to see your cart in comparison. <laughs> just, just real quick. I'm gonna pin this her screen. Go ahead, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, that's awesome. Can you yeah, go through so it? Go it's point a little to bit each of a thing. What? Point to each thing. Tell us what's happening. Oh God, no, I, I don't, I, I don't think I'll do that today. Um, but that's it. And then there's the batteries. Uh, this is great. Oh, and there's it. But yeah, it's it's a little bit less of a. Have have you spun the motor yet, sir? Yes, it spins. Okay, careful with it. I didn't see any bolts on it. It doesn't look <laughs> like it's, it's fastened down. It might jump off there if you request too much throttle. Oh yeah, I know, I know. It's it it's kind of in a, it's in like a cradle. Yeah. But yes, I am totally gently. I have to say that. Gently <laughs> throttle. Oh my god! Good <laughs> catch, uh, Hunter, uh, Sarah. Please, how am I? 
you're like one of my students. How am I going to sleep knowing that thing's not bolted down? Oh, it's it's okay, Ron. <laughs> Ron, if, if I can share my screen for a moment, I can show yeah. you my car. Okay, go for it. Go for it. Please do. This is very this is very exciting. I like everybody sharing their stuff. This is the whole point. Okay, where uh, do, are you sharing your screen, John? Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Oh! Um, this is part two. Oh, yeah. This is my card. I've got my uh, my battery pack down here and, and my BMS wiring, which is real neat, you can see. Um, I've got uh, my DC to DC. This is my charger. Um, and basically, I just got the charger working like about a week ago, so I'm, I was able to charge the battery a bit. Uh, and then that's the other way. See a little bit of close so up. Of... Cool. Sarah, do you feel better about your <laughs> got my high voltage yes. uh circuitry <laughs> out in the open here, so I keep my fingers away when I when everything's hooked up. That is awesome. Um, uh, I'm so proud, everybody. This is so cool. And then uh let's see, I gotta show you this one thing which is I'm very proud of. This was actually just on Sunday. Oh, nice. Is that going to run? Is that what's going on? It's a little bit of a choppy delay. Oh, I can kind of see it moving. Can you see it spinning? Congratulations. Yeah, it was a big day. That's awesome. Yeah. I know that feeling. It's amazing. <laughs> it was huge. And it, and it didn't even work. Uh, the first time so i had to do some major sleuthing to get it uh to get it going this is great this is so great now can i uh i first of all i noticed a detail that i really liked you have an old dial what is that can you go back to that i see the old amp meter or something what is that what is that so I got just a couple of cheap voltage meters. Just one's giving me my battery pack. The other one's giving my low voltage system. And then this is the, uh, get a sharp frame here. I don't know if I will, but I've got the uh, actual fuel gauge out of the Honda dashboard. And I've got that set up with, with the, uh, EVCC unit that should be giving me my state of charge. It's not quite calibrated yet. It does it does go up, but it's not accurate. Okay, dude, this is great. I'm very impressed. This is awesome. And uh, okay, now I have a question. What kind of motor is that? What is that? Oh, my motor. Yeah, um, that's the one out of the um, Coda. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is like a defunct company, right? It is a defunct company. Um, and how, and so did you have to do some hacking or programming to get that thing running? No, luckily Thunderstruck sold it to me. They they programmed the inverter to work with their VCU. So um, so it was pre-programmed. Uh, and then my my problem with it is that I found that my pack was not charged quite to its low voltage threshold. So um, it just wasn't initiating. So I had to do some a little bit of pre reprogramming it down a few volts um, to get it to initiate. And then once I did that, it spun. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I'm getting some photos ready to show you the bench top I did at the community college um, as well. Brandon, what do you think of all these people making the bench tops? I, I love it. It's, it's, I'm all about EVs and conversions and the, the education. I think it's really cool to like actually create your own bench. Obviously, ours is going to be mass produced for schools and for EV conversion enthusiasts. But I think it's really awesome to see how everyone does it their own way and how they can make it work. Like that, those are sick. I really like looking at those. That's cool. Um, do you, Brandon? Do you provide a wiring diagram that goes with your bench? Um, yes. Uh, both the uh, both the vehicle and the bench come with a full wiring diagram. It's about this big, and we let people print it out, laminate it. Um, we don't have any curved lines. Don't have to worry about that. Um, and every single wire is color coded accordingly. 
So I think we use like 12 different colored wires just so students and teachers can really understand and differentiate what each wire is doing and they're labeled. So it really helps okay. a lot. Uh, you know, something cool when I was working on the Switch Lab vehicle is you guys uh, put labels on all your wires. Yep, every single wire is terminated and labeled. It tells you exactly where it needs to go for it to work. <laughs> You've got a label maker that actually yep. is the shrink wrap. That's so yep. cool. That's like the coolest thing. Um, I'm there talking. you go. Yeah, that's how you do it. You got yeah, a label, not, label, label, label. Not ah, a is that it? Tool, but yeah, it's great. It's for your nice, Sarah. Impressive. All right, this is awesome. Super cool. Um, yeah, awesome. Let me. I want to try and pull up my um, uh, some of the stuff we did at the Bergen Community College that uh, where we had a bench. You know, the bench is really where it's at. You got to start somewhere and it really isolates uh, the whole thing about the, these are some of the students. Um, it isolates the, the, the trouble of, um, you know, when you, when you go to put the thing together, at least, you know, it works on the bench uh, first, you know, is, is that's what, it's such a good idea and it costs less, you know, than, uh, than doing it without that, you know. Uh, I just got to find it. We did this truck. It's got an AC50. It's an older uh, conversion. Uh, this was us just mounting the motor in there. Let me just get, it. you know, I, it's probably not enough motor for this vehicle, but at least we got it running. I think we have it right here. Is this it? Yeah. Maybe I'm going to swing around and, and show the bench. I thought we had a photo of the bench. Anyway, while I'm trying to find that, um, what other, uh, let's see, let's talk about some of the other stuff when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, Brandon and uh, Switch Lab. So, uh, so Brandon, um, what, what is the, what does the future look like for, uh, for, for, for Switch Lab? Is there, is there like what do you see happening like 10 years from now you know I, one of the things i was going to ask you maybe this will help lead you is uh i see you got the net game but what if you is there a good is there plans to put a tesla motor in a in a vehicle uh you know is that kind of a different setup what do you think uh we actually don't have any plans because we want to keep it simple it's a teaching tool so we want to get students excited and then if they want to go work for tesla or they want to go into ev conversion business or do it as a hobby themselves they can kind of get that training with tesla and they have to find that training elsewhere but we're really just trying to get people excited about evs get them into the ev industry because we have auto shops we have dealerships coming up to us saying we got no one who can work on our evs and that's really the gap we're trying to fill is a lot of teachers we've had a lot of pushback from auto shop teachers who don't want to get near a high voltage cable and they are scared to death. And our job is to make it as easy and simple for them to understand and practice the right safety. Like just do it because it's, nice. it's, it's coming. It's coming no matter what. Yep. And so. Yeah. Ooh. You know, like I, I, I understand the pushback and here's a little video you guys could see that we mounted it on a bench. What's nice is you can pull the bench close to your car and then just once you mount your motor in there, which should be number one priority, I think, mount your motor and then you'll figure out where all your other stuff goes. And that's kind of what we did here. Plus, I wasn't going to stay on this project forever, so I had to leave. And then um, because of that, I, uh, I just made sure I left them in good hands. Talik, what do you yeah. got? I feel like you're going to add something. I was going to say you you deputized a mini G. Oh yeah, so you know, and some of the other things I do when I'm when I'm working on a project is I always make sure the students I work with are feel empowered, um, because I know that I I can't always be there, you know. So I want to make sure that they know what's going on too. So in case I had to step out or or if I can't, I can't watch everything, you know, like like one time I had a, somebody uh, wire something in in series back to itself so it had like the full potential like brandon's dying <laughs> this is like EV <laughs> here. <laughs> that's a bad day oh god well i got lucky they uh they just vaporized a chip out of the out of the terminals and the and the lug and the ends and you know what happened was 
it was my fault because what I did was I said, here, hook this up. But I didn't, I didn't say, here is the wiring diagram. You figure out where it goes, you know, and then that way they feel, then they have ownership. You know, that's the best thing. Uh, once you own it, it's the yeah, best. Yeah, we, we, we've had no injuries, knock on wood, but we've had a few uh, fused bolts. The torquing the bolts into the battery cells. Has, did, you has say caused... fuse, did you say fuse bolts? Yeah, like it, the, the electricity arcs between the washer, oh, the lock nut, and the bolt. Welded. It becomes one. It literally welded. It was pretty much a weld. <laughs> welded the bolt. We've That's had a good. few of those. That's good. Uh, you know, I'm doing a off-grid system now with my students, and we're doing DC into AC. So now I got double to worry about. And the other day, I'm holding the fake wall, like two by fours with a outlet. And there's a plug. We made a little fake plug. And so I'm mounting it in the vise. And the other kid's holding it too. We're just kind of putting it in. And some kid plugs it in. And it, and it kind of like a little bit, just a tiny bit, just give a tingle to uh, the kid's finger. And he's like, ooh. And I was like, ooh, what do you mean, ooh? It's not on. And he goes, yeah, it's plugged in. I go, wait, what? And I saw that another kid out of nowhere had just been like, yeah, I'll plug it in for them. That's what they wanted. He's doing us a favor. Oh, my God. So what, I, what I'm going to do going forward is tag everything out. Yeah, lock so, out, tag out. Yeah, yep, yeah, lock out, tag out. Lock out, tag out, you know? And I'll tag the plug that says do not plug in unless, you know, everyone knows that, that it's hot, you know, type of thing. So anyway, yeah, safety is like a thing. Uh, yeah, so we've also had a lot of BMSs fried because students like to pull the taps out while it's still plugged in. Oh yeah, you get a lot of a lot of Orion two BMSs coming back and get refurbished. Oh yeah, they fry that capacitor inside. It's a very common mm -hmm. issue. Mm hmm. Interesting. Very cool. So Talik, uh, what am I missing? I, uh, I, you know, we covered a lot, uh, but I don't feel like we even got to uh, some of the other questions we had from before. Um, well, I was gonna say, uh, like, have we talked about? Um... Sorry, I've been in and out. Uh, have we talked about upcoming projects we're really excited about? And also, what has been your favorite build or project since starting Switched? Oh, my favorite project. It would probably have, we went to Fairfield High School. I was a part of the team, a uh, little community outreach. So we I, I posted it on uh, Instagram. We went to Fairfield. Uh, their program got rocked by COVID. And so myself, our product specialist, and one of our uh, certified Switch instructors drove down to Fairfield three days in a row for eight hour days and like revived their program, got their uh, AC motor running. It was an older model of switch we don't even offer anymore. And so uh, it should be towards the top of the Instagram. Yeah, the recharging Fairfield's high school's EV program. Oh, oh to the right. There it is. Yep. Nice. And so we all went down there. We spent, uh, the, the students actually got notes to get out of class so we had the students that we had the ev auto shop students for a full eight hours for three days in a row and we pretty much organized oh, it tro we organized it troubleshooted it got their ac motor running got their vehicle all set um and we would i would that was probably the most fun i've ever had and these students were so engaged and they were having the best time and they were paying attention they were listening um and we got their vehicle running and it had been dead since 2019 and so now wow. they got their EV. They're, they're, now they're going to keep rolling with it. That's great news, man. That's great news. Yeah, we want we want our teachers and students to use our program. That's that's part of my job is to make sure every single program is running and running well. Why isn't it running? I'm going to find a solution for the teacher or students, um, whether it's through customer support and R and D helping out, or us physically driving and being like, let's get our hands dirty, let's get this thing running. Yeah. Now, have you have you ever heard of? Um... Bergen County Technical Schools in New Jersey by Teterboro. Uh, I did look into like I know we sold a vehicle there, but I don't know a whole lot about it. Okay, so um, yeah, I helped them uh, get this one running. Uh, this is their uh, auto shop right here, and uh, that was the car. And when I got there, it was just boxes and the car. Yeah. 
Yep, that's how it's that's how it's delivered. It's by design. We fill it up with boxes. Um, yeah. And the teacher, I'm guessing that the, the you said the teacher did take the EV workshop or they did after. not? After. After. Uh, see, that's the issue is we tell teachers, do not touch it. Do not unbox it until, until you take the workshop because you will create major headaches for yourself down the road. Yeah. Um, okay. I have, I have a question. Uh, there are two brake pedals and they're separate. Is that still the case? And how can yep, you guys that, do that? That is the case because we want schools or ourselves, mostly ourselves for our show vehicle that I have next to me. Uh, we want it to be street legal. And so since it's a three wheeled trike, it has to have a front and back brake system to make it a true motorcycle. And so oh. that means it can be registered as a street legal vehicle. Um, I've driven, I've probably driven our show vehicle a hundred miles in the last year. And that's, that's how I'm able to drive it around I've never been pulled over yet, but cops have looked at me like, what is that thing? <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So that, that's just something we could do that a lot of schools don't do that. Um, but some schools do as a PR item, they can go in parades. Um, yeah. Street or, legal is a good idea. And then uh, I guess if it's a motorcycle, you don't have to worry about crash standards or stuff like that. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. And you also don't have to wear a helmet because there's a roll cage. There's an A and B pillar. So you don't have to wear a helmet. You're good to go. An A and B pillar. Got it. Yeah. So it's the two pillars like this one, like right here. Mm -hmm. That's that's going to be the A. The B's up front. Okay. I have another. I have another question. You have a double row chain here, and a yeah. single sprocket in the back. I was curious. Is there a reason for that? I've never seen a double row chain. Um, um, so for our higher torque and horsepower motors, that is the reason the hyper nine would shred a single chain. Oh, wow. So, uh, those motors just create too much torque and power. And so we went with a double chain, double sprocket, but you only need a single sprocket in the back. Um, we've had some schools just bolt two single sprockets together in the back to make it double the whole way. Oh but yeah. It, it, it's, it's truly up to, up to the school. Uh, we've I've I've pushed our vehicles pretty dang hard and never had a chain break. Wow. Okay. Um. All right. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is what we did. This is what we built. Yeah. Yeah. There's all the labeled labeled wires. Tells you oh, yeah. exactly where they're supposed to go. Yeah. It's great. Um. Okay. I got another question. Have you thought about? See. 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 You have the box that goes in the back. And you have the box that goes in the, you have the boards that go in the front. And what I was thinking was, since you're getting into the, um, you know, the uh, uh, bench game, have you ever considered having it so you build it on a bench and then just walk the bench over to the vehicle and bolt it right in? Uh, I don't think we've really had that idea because like we, like I said earlier, we split the students or teachers into groups and so they do build it on top of a bench and then they also balance it like they balance the whole we teach the whole balancing the battery pack it's one of the longest most annoying processes for teachers because it can take up to four weeks uh just to balance those batteries correctly but um it, it never seemed necessary because you can troubleshoot our vehicle so easily nothing is hidden nothing is hard to get to like it's the like little, it is a bench yeah, it's already a, it's a rolling platform. It's already a bench. At like yeah. you, you just take off the battery box cover. You can have access to all of it. Low voltage panels, like two, three knobbed nuts. It's it's it's. I've we've never had any issues because it's just so easy to troubleshoot from the vehicle itself. Okay, I have another question. Who is the um, employee who puts these labels on? Because I feel really bad for them. This is tedious. Yep, that is our wiring department. We have uh, three or four uh, wiring associates uh, led by Arthur, our head wiring uh, guy. What did they do wrong? Like, why are you so mad at them that you made every? <laughs> why do you do this to them? Why? 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 why do you do because this? because we we like to say uh, it's switch for dummies. We want to make this a foolproof design where a teacher cannot mess it up because it's labeled everywhere. We give you the wiring diagram. We give you the assembly manual. We get labeled wires. Even the DIN rail is labeled. So, like, it, it really does make it hard 
to mess up, which is our whole goal is we want teachers to be able to teach with it and not spend hours trying to figure out where does this one feral connector go. Yeah, I mean, it's no, it's really, I'm making a joke. It is very convenient, but I will tell you, oh my God, <laughs> it is like so small. Hey, they're they're fairly compensated. We 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 uh we pay them well, and they do a great job. And like my they've helped, they've helped me with so many things. So, like I couldn't, you know what I mean. But it, it actually did work. And that's that that mess is my fault. That's we were just you know it wasn't dialed in yet. Uh, this was. Did we lose Ron? Is Ron I think there? We, I think we just lost Ron. Oh no. Uh oh. <laughs> He'll oh, be man. back. Yeah. He'll be <laughs> He'll back. Be back. Uh, does anybody? So while we're here, um, are there any other questions for Brandon from our audience that's joined tonight? How many um, schools are using it? Or have uh, we're having? We're currently. We just shipped out. I think it was like two ninety seven. So we're in over 280 schools. Some schools have bought more than one. Uh, yeah, our Instagram, uh, I think Ron mentioned, has a nice program locations map. And so we, I, I always encourage people, go contact your local school. Go see it in person. It's really awesome to see. Um, but yeah, we're overseas now, too. We're in uh, Abu Dhabi, UAE, and we're uh, trying to make moves to the Virgin Islands as well. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, it's really impressive. Yeah, we didn't really pick up until like the last two years and a bunch of grants started coming out. Um, we sold about 12 vehicles to like Vermont through the Department of Education, uh, 12 different schools. I think almost all of them have gotten their switch by now. And then Georgia, the Department of Education in Georgia, I think is looking to buy about 20 of them. Are wow. Built, are these all built in-house? Brown, yep, brown yep, this, yeah, this is uh, American made as true as it gets. We literally buy the, the raw steel, we bend it, we cut it, we prep it, and we have a whole welding team. So everything is really? in-house welded. Yeah. Is, there, welded. A, cool. is there a racing series for them? Uh, we do have, a, we, we used to have a switch rally. Um, we lost the, sp the sponsorship ended for that, but we did have a little kind of competition where we invited all the Sonoma County North Bay, just north of San Francisco, all the schools, there's about 10 of them. And they all brought their vehicles. There was a troubleshooting challenge. There was an agility course challenge. How well did they align their wheels and get their suspension dialed in? And then they had a build quality. So how well did they build their vehicle? Um, and so that was a lot of fun. Awesome, yeah, that, that's um, pretty cool because uh, um, Ron likes to always include a element of competition to keep things moving along, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and so yeah, that's a great way. Like we're probably gonna, I'm gonna try and spin that up again. It's just a lot of manpower, and we're only, we're only like 23 strong. We're a very mom and pop company still. We we are really hustling over here and trying to trying to grow. Very cool, very cool. So, um, what what do you have coming on next year? Oh, I think we have Ron back. There's Ron. We got you. So the, 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 coming out this year is the EV trainer with all the curriculum and uh, educational kits with it. Um, and then I think R&D, they keep saying we want to do ADOS. That's, we want to add ADOS kits. So if you want to get blindside detection, uh, computer vision, lane assist, cruise control, that's kind of our five-year goal is to be able to sell those kits along with the chassis already and use oh, the wow. built in 12-volt system to teach students all the all the deeper technologies and still that's make it huge. accessible yeah that's definitely huge to have ADAS in a, a conversion build or a you know a platform build uh, i think ron are you, you're still mm -hmm. muted <laughs> are you with, uh, i think that's a great idea that's are, that is, are you that with is, us ron are you <laughs> Yes, thank you. Sorry, I don't know what happened in the internet there. It's great. Thanks for running it. But I think that's a great idea, the ADOS, because um, you know the whole thing is that you know they're basically robots now. They're no longer cars, and uh, you know, not for nothing. I don't mean to sound rude, but the general public still has no idea what's coming. Uh, although, I, to be fair, I was a flip phone guy till 2015, and I refused. A smartphone people used to make fun i'd be like nah and i'd flip it open you know <laughs> it 
it was ridiculous. But people, you know, you got to realize, yeah, these cars are robots and they're going to be lane assist and all that stuff. So that's really cool. Is that what Talig asked when I was gone? What are you working on next? Yeah. So yeah, like after the EV trainer, um, also uh, just general updates to the Switch Lab EV. We really do want to make it something that students can recognize components when they get to an auto technician class or become an auto technician or they go into auto manufacturing or battery chemistry manufacturing like oh i recognize that lithium iron phosphate battery definitely this is great well um i really appreciate you coming in uh talik is there anything else we want to cover well i think we talked the future he talked about his favorite projects um i don't know what's what um where are you Does anybody have any questions well, we uh, we're in with before uh <laughs> before we uh wrap it up while they think of some questions i was going to say brandon where do you what are you most excited to see coming out of this industry out of the industry is like education industry is the, or ev industry with like the the, the, the conversion slash modification industry like it's just starting to blow up like what are you most excited about i'm excited about the accessibility improving really just giving people the chance to do it and engage with them and show them that it's possible and that it high voltage isn't as scary as you think as long as you use proper uh, safety precautions i really think that's really where it's going to go I, like legacy ev ourselves ev west um are all offering training and providing that crucial component to making sure evs become a mainstay and the gearheads and hot rodists really get to still have fun it's just in a different uh, power system. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. And, you know, I'll just add one more thing is that the electric vehicle is kind of an off grid system. And so I'm doing an off grid system with my students right now. You know, the idea that your house is always connected to the grid, um, that's kind of maybe an old idea. And uh, I mean, the grid is incredible. I think people don't realize how important thomas edison was they do this thing where they compare him to tesla and nikola tesla yeah but that was just a side riff but in general edison got the grid going and that's great but we now have the batteries to get a lot of people to have at least half of their house off the grid and your car is off the grid so that could mean that you could plug the car in and so you might have an AC system on the car. Um, have Brandon, have you guys considered doing an AC inverter as part of the package as like, like almost like the Ford F F-150 Lightning has an AC inverter in the back so you could run power drills? We haven't we haven't really thought about that yet. We definitely is something that we've noticed with the trends. Like I think the Cybertruck also has that ability to send power back into a house or into tools and higher voltages. Um, but that is something that I've definitely am going to pitch to R&D and they've been watching it. We're also going to switch the charger because we use the J1772, which is now becoming obsolete and Knox is the new one. So in the coming years, we're going to switch over the NACS standard just so students are using what's used around the world and country. So yeah, that, that's definitely on our minds. And just so people are clear who are watching this later, and anybody in here that the next system is basically the tesla system um well just the shape and they open source that from my understanding so that's not their system any longer that's everyone's um have you thought about i'm just thinking of questions now before we go um have you thought about uh fast charging because okay so you have your ac chart you know charger that's on board essentially and it's either doing like three or six k maybe something like that but but what about uh dc to dc charging have you thought about this oh no okay yeah, we have level one and two that's what our vehicles can do but fast charging like it's it's all trying to figure out what is worth putting the time and energy in developing versus can we teach students the basics and if they want to pursue that career they can go and learn about fast chargers or the ac inverters I, you know, Brandon, I agree with you. Uh, I've been an educator for 19 years. It's not about checking the boxes. It's, it's literally just, you're just trying to get people excited and then give them some tools so they can get a little more advanced. And then it's really up to them. 
Yeah, exactly. If you give students like a vehicle that can go 80, 90 miles per hour and they can have fun with and then go home and tell their parents, hey, mom and dad, I built an EV. I, that would have killed for that in my high school. Holy crap. If that was my shop class. I would have signed up every year. Dude, tell me about it. Me too. The irony, the irony of this whole thing with me hosting a shop class podcast and an EV conversion podcast is that I did not have shop class growing up. And, you know, I was, I was a nineties kid and the, the neighborhood I was in was a college for all neighborhood. And, uh, you know, which is ridiculous. Uh, so, so now I'm to make up for that. I, I was so mad about that, that I was, I just, I became a shop teacher for life. So, <laughs> um, but we're all helping each other out with this being a shop class for everyone. Uh, pretty cool. So, yeah, so we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up here. This is pretty good. Talek, you got anything else for us? I'm just excited to see more, you know, companies doing exactly this because it's going to take an entire village of companies doing teaching carts and getting builds and, and all the teachers. In fact, having such a great team that you have. So love to see this and love to see more groups be inspired by what you do. Nice. Jonathan, you got any, uh, any comments, final thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I'll just echo Talik. I mean, I'm so excited that you guys are doing this and that it's getting into so many classrooms because that's a lot of a lot of kids out there who are going to get excited with that kind of hands-on experience working with that. Oh, that's Great a good work. question. Uh, Brandon, how many uh, kits do you think you guys have sold? Oh, uh, we've, oh, we've sold. We're actually like quite a few uh, months behind in production, uh, but we've sold 330 now and we are shipping like 290 so we're about 30 behind um we also really really i forgot to mention this we highly encourage modifications we've had a school at a fourth wheel we've had schools add their own lighting systems their own sound systems um that's something we're trying to give schools a platform to work from so you can get your cad designs we've had schools fabricate uh panels on the side so they almost made it like a half closed shell um, so that's, that's really the key is to like give students a project like, okay, we've built this now what, well, now we can go modify it. We can alter it. We can, we can tweak it. We can do regenerative breaking. Um, ours comes with regenerative breaking out the door. So it's, it's really cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Jonathan, you sparked that question. Thank you. That's a lot of kits. That's a lot of schools. You know, uh, that could lead into a follow-up podcast down the line, maybe in a, like one to three months, we could talk about all the different ways you program those to be ready out of the box, especially region. I would love to talk about region when it comes to these projects. Yeah. Shout out to Hunter and redoing his uh, manual for the hyper nine. That yeah. helped us a lot. I can talk to you all day long about region. You want to talk about some region? <laughs> yeah. Hunter, we got to have you back as yeah. the featured guest. You just pick a Tuesday. That'd be well, awesome. I'm not going to follow up Brandon. He did a great job here. I'm <laughs> proud of you, Brandon. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Hunter. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, keep, keep getting the knowledge out there because I think most of the EV naysayers are people who have never felt the exhilaration or the joy of driving an EV or just don't know anything about it. And uh, and and that's why they, they shy away from it so much. So the more people that know about it, I think the more enthusiasm you get. It's It's hard to resist that EV grin. Yeah, that's the whole butts and seats thing. And I like to call it the green eggs and ham scenario. You know, it's like, oh, try this. It's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. But until you actually try it, like you said, that's what gets people to enjoy it. You know what? The, 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 I, the funniest thing about yeah. all this is I'm looking at the room here and we're all like car people, you know? So like, I think everyone here has messed around with oil and grease and pistons. And I think that's, that's you know, the electric vehicle it's not an anti-gas vehicle. It's, it's a, it's an option, you know, it's, it's some, it's, it's a new option. It's faster, more, more efficient. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's cleaner, you know, and so there's a lot of benefits and, uh, you know, it, some people who are on the fence about this, you know, but the thing is they're not because what I tell people is it's really the starter motor. If you could just like click, on the gas engine and delete and then click the starter motor and go mm -hmm. <laughs> and just blow it up then you you have an electric motor you just need a speed controller and battery that's the thing it, it simplifies what we have now because every car out there is a hybrid it has a battery an electronic system a starter motor they're they're 
they're hybrid vehicles. You're just taking the gas and oil aspect out of it, the combustion and the, the right. air and fuel. Yeah, every vehicle is a hybrid. That's really funny. And it's incredible the amount of amps that a starter motor pulls, like 800 amps at 12 volt. That's why the wires are so thick. And that's why your battery doesn't last that long. Like if you're cranking, cranking, cranking in the winter, that you only got like maybe like 10 minutes, not even. Maybe if you crank for five minutes, it's dead. And then that comes into uh, amp hours, which is not something everybody understands. You know, you got one amp, you're pulling one amp and you got a one amp hour battery. You got one hour till it's dead. You know, so these are the kind of the calculations that are unfamiliar because everybody knows, oh, how many gallons, how many gallons of gasoline? That's how people think. How much horsepower, you know? Back to the horsepower thing. <laughs> Yo, know, Brandon, how, how did you not know about the horsepower thing? I, I'm sorry, Ron. I'm sorry. I, I guess maybe I just missed that class. I missed <laughs> no, but it's because it's irrelevant. It's ridiculous. You know, no one's count taking a horse and pulling 550 pounds one foot for one, over one second. That's like, I don't know. It was a marketing ploy. You got to look it up. Look at They have a diagram and everything. You got to <laughs> set up a pulley to the horse and it's ridiculous. Uh, anyway, Sarah, what do you think? Any closing, uh, any closing thoughts here? Any questions for uh, Hunter or Brandon before we go? No, I'm just happy to be here. And the more I hear people talk about all the nuances of this, the more I learn. So it's, it's, um, it's really fun. Thanks. Nice. Cool. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for being here. Two things for Sarah um, and everybody who's watching this um, in the, comments i posted a link to our current user manual not not everybody knows it's out there but we published a new manual in october that's what brandon mentioned and it just has a lot more information than our previous hyper 9 and hyper 9 hv system user manuals so if you're not using that yet make sure you go to our go-ev.com slash downloads page and download that new manual um, everything in the previous manuals was accurate but this one has more and Merit at EV West is converting a Geo Tracker, not a Suzuki Samurai. But what, what's the difference? <laughs> right. Good to know. Yeah, I, I stumbled upon that uh, revised manual and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But thank you for, for uh, announcing that. Yeah. Hover over projects and links, Ron. Okay. And click downloads over, over to the right projects and. Oh got it there you go downloads that's the page you always want to check to see if there's any uh any updates out there and it's that top left link there user manual for hyperdrive inverters all right nice and i gotta tell you we relied on this when we did our uh, uh bus project over the summer mm -hmm. so uh this is good stuff i know you didn't have this one this is the updated one mm -hmm. uh but stuff like this was great where to put the wires really helps out and this the loop this is my favorite oh i'm not sharing it i'm so sorry there we go are you guys there yep there's some oh. uh 45 degree there's some diagonal lines on that there oh that's okay <laughs> I, that's right i'll forgive you just on the motor phases everything else is horizontal or vertical oh yeah that's cool that's all right jonathan you're okay. <laughs> you, did, you did good. Uh, so, you know, this stuff's great because this is the starter loop. This is everything you need. It's everything you need to get started. Yep. Um, and there's a, Ron, you should uh, take a look through that sometime when you have, well, I guess probably when you're doing your next Hyper 9 conversion, you'll, you'll want to use that one. Nice. Oh, and I see you got the Dana TM4 on there. Right. Um. You know, Dana, people, it's amazing. Dana axles, like the Dana transmission, the Dana axles, uh, they are, uh, 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 they're a huge company that's been around for a hundred years. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, they're on the stock market. And, uh, you know, if you, if they you do. look at the five, this is, this is gone horizontal for five years. So, uh, but it pays a dividend. So watch out. You know, uh, this is probably something to follow. I think because if they could get all their uh, all the buses 
and all the uh, all the big trucks to have a Dana axle that has an electric motor in it, that would be really good. <laughs> you know, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, <laughs> it's see. hard. To, it's hard to predict. It is. Hunter, are you, Hunter, are you ever going to get that uh, dual shaft back, or is that going to be discontinued forever? Well, that's that's the thing. I think, um, you know, Dana being the company that they are, the, the large company that they are, I think it's just going to take a really high volume to get that that encoder bearing back into production. And it's it's not just Dana. It was SKF, the bearing manufacturer, who discontinued it because the volume was low and the expense was high. And um, so it, it just needs to get high volume to to become a product again um it's not completely off the table but no news on it yet um and as as far as those large vehicles i don't know i i don't think anybody should be forced to drive electric i i, I think anybody who drives electric agrees with that <laughs> most of us here at least and um those heavy vehicles just take so much energy and so much battery to to support that energy draw that um I don't I don't think we could handle it if we converted all the cars, all the buses and trucks over to electric right now or uh, freight liners. Um, I, uh, that's it's just too much energy. So in my personal opinion, I like the, the go karts, the, the side by sides and daily driver cars. Um, I think that's doing the most for uh, electrification. You know, that's a good uh you know that came up i actually talked with one of the teachers that worked on um a switch lab with me before and i texted him i said hey you should get on tonight and he said oh, i can't but i said okay give me three questions and three questions were addressing what you're talking about they're not specific to the switch lab but can the can the grid handle all the electric vehicles and what do you think of hydrogen now I'll just say that's probably a segue to a whole other podcast. <laughs> oh, that's like two or yeah, three podcasts. Yeah, that's a whole right different topic. Yeah. But, but, but I will say I will say to Hunter that um, I 100% agree with you. I don't think anybody should be forced to do any of this stuff. And uh, it's funny. Among all of the people that I've ever met when it comes to converting cars and all the hot rodding, you know, electric hot rodding that I've ever done, nobody I know personally – wants to force it it's it's really these lawmakers that are forcing it and um you know i don't know what i, I don't understand like i think that a consumer should decide you know uh whether they want it or not just like we went everyone used to have a landline when i was a kid we had a landline i haven't had a landline since i left my parents house you know because i choose a cell phone you know that's my choice but imagine if they force you to do it oh man so I agree with you. Uh, nobody should be forced to do any of this stuff. It's really just education. And if you have a, a need, get yourself an electric car, you know? Right. So cool. All right. Uh, anything else before we leave? Uh, I think Joe, oh, John Lane's got some cool EV rider stuff. We'll just tease next week. Or maybe if he wants to jump on, jump on next week or the ne or when they feel like jumping on. So this is their 72 Beetle. Yeah. So that was a Hyper 9 project. Um, the guy was a like 30 year auto mechanic and put it together in like three months at our club. Very cool. Ooh, putting it and in then, the floor. Yeah. And then the blue lemons EV truck that I, that we showed at the top of the podcast is hyper nine. And now we're putting hyper nines in a Porsche 912 and a Fiat 124. Oh, okay. awesome. Yeah, man. I oh, look at this switch. Hey, right yeah. there. <laughs> That's exactly what you need it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Cool. Well, this is great. I, you know, a lot of people are doing this stuff, and uh, this is the uh, the goal of the podcast uh, is to get everybody together to talk about this stuff. And even though we highlighted Brandon, I think the whole point is just to get everybody together. So, yeah. all right. Well, we'll wrap well, it up there. Sorry, what, Tyler, what do you got? One more thing. So, uh, Brandon, one thing, uh, if we get a chance to review you on Out of Spec Renew, the new channel for Out of Spec covering conversions and modifications in the EV space, I'd love, when if I'm in your area, I'd love to come shoot for you. Um, as well as everybody, go subscribe to Out of Spec Renew if you have not yet. We're very close, if not, have just passed a thousand subscribers. 
Um, I'm about to drop a video soon of my uh, tour and hangout with uh, Revolt Systems. So that's going to be a really cool video when it comes down. But yeah, if you have any topics that you'd like to, to feature on Out of Spec Renew, let me know. Yeah, the, the, for everyone here, if you're ever in Sebastopol, California, come and stop by Switch Vehicles headquarters. I'll let you uh, do a few burnouts and show you the whole vehicle and the whole kit. It's a lot of fun. Okay. Awesome. All right. Oh, and uh, 1.25. Cool. There we go. All right. We're doing it. We're doing it. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. So Jerome is uh, has been, he's, he launched the channel and he started with it. And we're going to have contributors from around the world, including myself. Um, again, I have like two videos in progress. I need to finish editing to submit. Um, but yeah, this is this this is the place where we're going to talk about getting nerdy, kind of like here, but more of in like a video feature rather than a, a roundtable. Very cool, very cool. And uh, if you're if I mean I don't know who's listening to this in New Jersey, but uh, if you're in New Jersey, I do have a crash course coming up. Um, and it's going to be uh, uh, in New Jersey at Hackensack. Uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be at Mr. G's workshop. It's just kind of a quick electric car conversion class, and very hands on. And that's coming up on uh, Sunday, February twenty fifth, one to five p.m. Really, really quick class, like a four hour class. And uh, this is the website right here, uh, rongrosshair.com. Definitely right. can't forget tonight's sponsor is Mr. G's workshop. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's all good. But it's 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 we're all working together to make it happen. Okay, so thanks a lot, uh, Brandon. Thanks for taking the time, Brandon. This is super cool and last minute too. Very awesome. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. It was a great time. I always love talking about uh, EV education and getting uh, more eyes on it. You know, it, I can't wait to see that trainer in person. That that the the table you made is ridiculous it, come to sebastopol california you'll, you'll get to see it up and close and personal you know how, Go on, like a little vacation how far from san diego is that oh uh <laughs> like the entire state hey I, I love a road trip i love a road trip yeah, and if i have a reason yeah just just north of san francisco we're like an hour north of san francisco well Perfect. i try I'll to be there to, yeah <laughs> well talik if you want we'll drive up there together because i i get out to california hopefully once a year and uh, when we get out there, do a class, and then shh, head up there and go see Brandon, the man. I would, the love, that. I would, I would, I would love to host you guys and show you around. That'd be oh, a lot of fun. That'd be awesome. Cool. All right. We'll end the recording there. Thanks a lot. And uh, we'll see everybody next week. Thank, Thank you, Ron. So Appreciate the invite. Cool. Yeah, no problem. You're the man, Mr. G. Ah, <laughs> nah, you, that's awesome. Thanks, no, man. Thank